What's going on everybody and welcome back to Tech Cubed and today we are going to be installing Windows XP in a VirtualBox virtual machine. Now a while ago when I was trying to get this work, a little backstory here, um, I tried multiple methods that I saw online to get this to work and unfortunately all of those were incredibly out of date like a lot of these older operating system installing into virtual machine kind of things are and some of them looked pretty suspicious like they might have had a virus on them, like when you go to download your ISO. Like those weird cracked ISOs you usually do not want to mess with. Uh, some are okay, uh, some I have tested myself that work, because some of them contain bootloaders and stuff that you need to get your operating system to work, like some of the Mac OS ones. However, usually when it comes to regular operating systems, like Windows or Linux, it should just be like a regular ISO image that has the operating system like with no cracks on it because usually there will be other methods to get it to work if you can't just get it up and running without any special stuff like um, bootloaders or stuff like that. Now you are going to need a couple things to do this. First off you are going to need the ISO image of course which is this Windows XP Professional um, Service Pack ISO image. Now there will be a link to this in the description below of course. Um, now the next thing you are going to want to get is, well of course, VirtualBox. And yes, because that's what we're going to be installing this onto. This is what's going to have our virtual machine. And you are going to need a serial key to get this to work. However, I will leave that in the description below so you don't need to have to go search for it yourself and it'll just be like a simple um, fill it in thing because you can't copy and paste it unfortunately. I've tried that already, you can't do that because it's in a virtual machine, however it'll just be a simple type it in sort of thing. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. So first thing you're going to want to do is come to VirtualBox and going to want to click New. Now keep in mind when um, I do this, uh, I have it set to expert mode right here. Um, now you can, it's usually on default when you get to, when you download VirtualBox the first time, it's set default to guided mode where it walks you through it. Um, feel free to just click um, expert mode or you can just keep it on guided mode because it's basically the same thing going through the process. When you're on guided mode, it's kind of for beginners and it walks you through it a little bit more. How, like how to do it and what everything means. But I've been doing this for a good amount of time so I like to keep it on expert mode. But it's otherwise the same thing. Next, what you're going to want to do is, well, set where you want to install it to. And I am, and then you need to put a name, so I am just going to call it Windows XP, of course. Uh, very simple. Um, next, it says Windows, Microsoft Windows, Windows XP 32-bit. Uh, you are not going to want to do 32-bit, you are going to want to do 64-bit. Now, when it comes to memory, um, you can basically set it to whatever you want. I mean, as long as it's usually above the preset because um, if you go below it's not going to be good like if you run Windows XP of 4 megs right here which if you bring it down to close which it runs on it's not going to be pleasant to say the least uh, so I like to put it up a bit I'll get, I'm going to do overkill like 8 gigs now that is way more than enough RAM for Windows XP like usually you might want to just put it on 4 however I have a good amount of RAM on my machine so I'm going to put it on 8 gigs, which is 8192 megs, by the way, for those of you who don't know. And 4 gigs of RAM is 496 megs. So that's just kind of explaining that, because you might be confused by that if you've never done this before. But anyway, this one I'm going to set mine to. Um, and next, I'm going to create virtual hard disk now. I'm going to click Create. I'm going to put a VDI, VirtualBox Disk Image, dynamically allocated. Now for your storage or your, like this is your choosing your virtual hard drive and how big you want it to be. Um, I'm going to set mine, I'm going to be pretty generous here. I'm going to give it 64 gigs. Way more than enough than you probably need. But um, I have a pretty decently sized secondary hard drive on my computer which I keep all my virtual machines and stuff on. So I'm going to keep it on 64 gigs. You probably only need to put 
I mean, 10 is a default, would probably do just fine, but if you want to install some, like, the older software or some of the older games and stuff that you can't run on modern machines, then, yeah, 64 gigs or even more. Like, you can put up to 120 gigs. I'm not, because while well, I can do it, it's a little overkill, especially since I'm not going to be doing incredibly much with it. I'm going to do a little bit, but not incredibly much. But it's really up to you how much storage you want to put on there. Um, now I'm going to do create. All right, now you'll see this right here. Net, but before we do that, we want to change some simple settings. You can start this up, and it'll ask you to insert the disk image, and you can just do that. Um, however, there are some settings that I recommend you change. You can start it up now, and we'll go from what, what happens when we start it up. But um, I recommend you change a couple settings. So first, I'm going to come to System, and I'm going to put... And I'm going to go into processors, and I'm going to put two processors. That'll help out a ton in this machine. Now, Windows XP, I think, was one of the last major operating systems where you can get away with a single core processor because multiple core processors really came around with Windows 7 because that's when you had your multi core Athlons for the first time from AMD and your Intel Core 2 series. That's it, came out around then. So, that Windows XP is really the last operating system you can get away with in at least the Windows line anyway, with only one processor. I don't really recommend it though, especially since we have Service Pack 3, which is way more updated, even though Windows XP is not getting updates anymore because it's very old. It's like 20 years old at this point. However, we are on Service Pack 3, which was an updated version, at least for the time. Next, I'm going to come to Display. I am going to up my video memory to 128 megs. Don't have to do that. Again, it makes the experience way, way better. Next, for VirtualBox VGA or VBox VGA, um, yeah, I, I just leave it like that. Um, now, for storage, now this is the most important part. You want to come to storage, click on Empty. Next, you're going to want to click Choose a Disk File, and then go to that same place that you kept your, um, or you downloaded your Windows 7 ISO to. Usually, it's going to be in your Downloads folder, uh, but I have a separate folder I keep all my ISOs and stuff like that. So, I'm going to select it, Windows XP Professional. I'm going to click open. Next, I'm going to click OK. And now we are finally ready to start. It's been a, well, I've taken a good amount of time to do this, of course, to get to this point, but we are doing it the correct way. Next, you're going to want to start. And this right here is if you wanted to start it up earlier, like I said, and you didn't want to go through settings, which you can do, um, you can just come in here and select startup disk and you can set it to your Windows Professional Service Pack. Because that's what you would usually do if you just started it without going into settings. Because it's like a measure for... Because um, I, don't, I don't think they had this in previous versions of VirtualBox. You had to go into settings and set it customly. Um, because, you know, people didn't do that. They go into settings and use it properly, I guess. However, we've already done that in the empty bit earlier. So you can just click X. However, if you didn't go into settings earlier, you're going to want to select right here and, pro and uh, go to Add. And then, of course, add that uh, ISO. But this is for people who didn't go into settings and configure some stuff around. Uh, but if you have already done that, just click X like we have. And Windows XP will begin to start. You can close out these little pop-ups because they happen in VirtualBox. And next, Windows will begin the setup process. Uh, now, you can feel free to capture it because you probably want to do that because it's going to be a lot of using like your up and down keys and stuff like that because it doesn't really have that good much of a graphic graphical interface um, like regular operating systems did later. Um, so right here, welcome to setup, um, stuff like that. Set up Windows XP now, press enter. Um, I am going to click F8 because I agree. Um, I am going to install on the unpartitioned space that we set earlier. So I'm going to press enter and Next, I, I'm just going to use the quick version since um, it's not a big deal because we have we don't have any other operating systems or anything else like that on the virtual machine. So you could just do quick. Um, you can do regular if you want. However, it's not a big deal for me. So I'm just going to click the quick. Now it will go through its format process and it won't take that long. Um, now... When we get through this and it installs on here, um, oh yes, yeah, see it already formatted right now. Um, it'll examine your disks and it takes some time to do that. Now, once you get it to the point where you have to set up your accounts and stuff, it'll become like a regular graphical interface. Um, however, 
Right now, it's just a basic uh, setup process. Now it's moving pretty quick since we're using very modern hardware to do this. I um, mean, you can use OR systems, of course, and to do it with this and stuff. However, uh, I got a pretty modern machine. I assume a lot of people watching this have pretty good machines that are going to be installing this on, especially if you went into settings and up the processors and up the video memory and stuff. Um, so, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's moving pretty fast, though, because we're using a modern machine. It won't take that long, in my experience. The first time I tried this, it didn't take more than a minute to install. Uh, because, of course, I test these things beforehand, and I make sure it's safe and stuff like that. I don't do that on my main machine. I do that on another machine. However, I always do make sure these things are safe, because I'm here to help people and not ruin their lives, per se. So, um, it won't take that long. Yeah, see, it stops and then it moves again. But, um, yeah, I think I will be right back when it finishes. Okay, so it looks like it just finished. Um, it didn't take that long. It only took like an, like 10 seconds um, after I said I was going to be right back. But it's not a big deal. Um, so reset your computer, press enter. So you can do enter, um, or you can wait for it to run the process by itself. Um, and then I press A key to boot from CDM. It's going to press enter, regular enter. Um... Now, it will go through here, of course. Now, here is something interesting right now that you're going to want to have to do. Right here where it goes up is starting Windows. If you get this, because I've seen different results, um, I just wanted to make sure I was going to do this first. However, if you get it right here where it says to set up Windows XP, now press enter, this is where a lot of people get so confused. Um, now, what happens for some people, um, you can just skip this next step if it didn't happen to you and it continued regularly. However, We've, it's automatically booting to the installation media even though it's already installed on the machine. So if you get this, you, what you're going to want to do is click X, power off the machine. Now you're going to want to come back into settings and go to storage and remove disk from virtual drive. Or I guess if you want to keep it in the virtual drive, you can just click hard disk and move it up. However, that's just a quick, more forward way to do it. Because uh, it will be there, the installation media, when you fully set up Windows. But you can always come back and do it and stuff. Because that's one of the great things about VirtualBox. You can insert um, new virtual optical media. Um, but anyway, just remove that and we can click Start. That is, if you have that, of course. it's Because I tested it on two machines. It did it on one, but not the other. But I guess it happened on this one. So, next it will start up like this. I'm going to capture uh, my cursor in there in the virtual machine and yep now it's a regular graphical interface like i said so um right here now this is what confuses me or not confuses me but um confuses a lot of other people because they're like okay so i had to take it out but now i have to put it back in yes you do so come to devices go to optical drives and put it back in there and it will continue the process okay because that that um confused a lot of people in my experience, because they had to take it out and then they had to put it back in. And especially when people didn't know how to do that, because you have to come to devices, go to optical drives, and then reinsert it. Because a lot of people didn't know how to do that. So, anyway, just go through the setup process. Um, it'll do its little installing windows, finishing installation, and stuff like that. Um, installing devices and everything else. Um, again, <laughs> pretty quick since we're using a modern machine. But it will take some time though, of course, like all these things do. Okay, so it went through its little bit of installation thing. And then we'll click next. Um, you can set, um, cause this is basic configuration stuff. Um, so of course, you know, go through here and set it to what you want it to be. However, I'm just gonna go in here and I'm going to set uh, the channel name right here, Tech Cubed. Um, now this is where a lot of people give up and quit. Finally, right now. Uh, because a lot of people, especially people that are new to this, will see this, they'll go and look up product keys, but this is the one that works. So, you're going to want to come in here and type in M6TF9. Uh, uh, okay, so I keep this inscription, of course, you can just read it off yourself, but this is the product key. Um, that they do that they make you put in now a lot of newer windows you can skip this or just say I'll do it later and then not do it however in Windows XP they make you do it so it's not a big deal especially since we got ways around this um, 
But yeah, that's just something keep in mind you might have to do. Okay, so that is the last little bit of product key. I click next right here. I keep your name that. Uh, we can do that, I guess. Administrator password, do I need one? I guess not. Um, alright, so that seems pretty good. Uh, Thursday, May 20th, 2021. Um, 5.41pm. Um, yeah, that's pretty accurate, I'd say. Sp Pacific Time, US and Canada, Tijuana. You know, I give this thing props, because, you know, it kept up well and, well, knew what time zone I was on. So yes, it will go through its last little bit of installation. I think this last bit anyway, because um, it has like a lot of things where it goes installing, installing, and then do a little bit of setup, and then installing. Because it's very confusing, not gonna lie. Whereas on newer Windows, you go through and you install it, and then you set it up. Because um, there's a lot of things that when, especially if you go back and use an old operating system like this. There's a lot of things that you'll notice and be like, wow, we really fixed this over time. But now it's like, it's a bit annoying, even if you didn't notice it back then, I guess. So, it'll go through its last little bit of setup, and we'll be right back when it finishes. Okay, so we're back, and Windows XP, it finished its installation, and it rebooted, and then it took me to here, basically. Um, it didn't boot to the CD this time. A little confusing how it does that, however, or the virtual optical media, per se. However, it will automatically go through a process, and it will bring you here. Now, to improve the appearance of visual elements, Windows automatically adjusts the screen resolution. Yeah, that's, that's, that's fine, I guess. Um, but yeah, once it finishes installing... Okay, now we got the little Windows XP intro mu music that I really like. Um, but yeah, when, to, when it finishes its installation fully, it will, it will take you to that little, um, thing where it goes, we're adjusting the thing. So don't be worried, um, once it reboots. And yeah, it didn't boot to CD that time. But anyway, uh, click next. And, uh, help, sorry, not, <laughs> alright. Help my, help, help protect my PC by turning on automatic updates now. Sure. This thing doesn't get any updates, but sure. <laughs> Okay, I'll click next. Oh, who uses this computer? Uh, you guys already know who's using this computer. Um, tech. Uh, cute. Alright, so I'm gonna click next. Uh, thank you, you're ready to go. Um, learn about the exciting, uh, oh yes. That, that booting up sounds classic. Alright, so now we are in Windows X. P, your computer might be at risk. Can't do virus software is not installed. I just set up the dang thing. Just let me have some time to myself. Okay? Please, go away. Okay, no. No, no, no. Oh, this is, there was apparently an anime visual tour. Oh, but yes. So this is, basically, it is, we are finished installing Windows XP. Now, there are some things you can go and do. In fact, let me, if I can do it, let, let me try and go to the control panel. And can I set it up to use a 16 by 9 aspect ratio? Maybe. Okay. So, uh, let's do more. I, it goes 1600 by 1200. Um, I don't think so. I, it, uh, let's see. Um, 1024 by 768. Yeah, so I think these are 19 by 10 resolutions. Or not 19 by 10, but uh, 16 by 10. Because uh, I want to use it in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Um, so yeah, I, I, there are drivers that um, I recommend you go get. Um, I will try and link a page in the description that lists all the basic drivers that is recommended that you should get. Um, I might make an extra video about setting up all your Windows XP drivers. Um, if you guys want it, you, you can let me know. Like in the description stuff. However, it's kind of a lot of extra setup that you just don't have to do, especially now since everything's fully up and running. But yeah, this setup, it, it, that's basically it. So Windows XP is set up and you can feel free to use it and everything else like that and connect to the internet and do things. Um, however, connecting to the internet might not be the best idea, um, especially since you're using Windows XP. There are other ways to get your like downloaded applications and your games working on here. 
Um, however, that will be it for today. I hope you all enjoyed. Um, it took a while to get this up and running. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you all in the next video. Tech Cubed, over and out.